It rebroadcasts at noon and 5 p.m. on HCC TV, and we're all across social media. Yes, we are all over. Uh, We're on YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. All you have to do is look for Houston Community College District, and you will find us. That's right. Okay, Tony, you'll be talking with this next guest. Uh, always love having the Colonial Williamsburg Foundation on the show. I know we've had some representatives on here a few times in the past. I love Colonial Williamsburg because uh, if you haven't been there, uh, one year, I guess it was a stretch between like 2016 and 2018, my wife and I went up there three times in a span of two years. It was great. And uh, hopefully we'll get back soon. But we've got as part of our virtual family fun day, uh, Stacey Hernandez. She's the digital content director with the Colonial Williamsburg Foundation. Good morning to you. Good morning. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, we're happy to have you with us. And we're looking forward to hearing about you guys have so much going on. Follow them in social media, folks. We'll talk more about that later. But we're going to hear about the live streams and all the other offerings that they have coming up. All right, Stacey, we'll be back with you shortly. Right now, we're going to kick things off with Tamala Austin. She's the founder of Jive Juice Company, and she's part of HCC's Open for Business program. Now, if you remember, we had uh, Dr. Maya Dernovo on earlier this week talking to us about the Open for Business Wells Fargo Partnership. They are partnering with our Entrepreneurship Center here at HCC. Well, Jive Juice uh, plays a role in that. They're owned by, I mentioned, Tamala Austin. And Tamala joins us now on the show. Good morning, Tamala. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thanks for being here. Now, I understand congratulations are in order. You are now, your your juices and your products are now uh, joining the HEB family. That's a pretty big deal. Yes, yes. Thank you. So where can they find your products on the shelves in HEB? We're in the produce section and we're in almost 50 stores in Houston and surrounding areas in HEB, as well as Whole Foods. Okay. Tell us about Jive Juice. What is that all about? Tell us about your company. Yeah. So the the acronym Jive stands for juicing is very essential. Um, It's a company that I started at home in my kitchen with, um, along with my daughter and I, Um, I started it because I was facing some health challenges and wanted to find a natural way to help um, combat the challenges that I was facing. And I found that through juicing and um, exercising and just doing, um, changing up some things in my traditional patterns would help to increase the chances of me having a more healthier lifestyle. Now, I remember, I think it was back in the 90s, there were these infomercials all over TV. And that seems like when the juicing craze started off and you could buy these machines for like $250. You call the 1-800 number, you buy the machines. And I bought one. My problem was when you'd put in an orange or something, you'd come out with about a quarter, about a, a cup of pulp and maybe a little bit of juice. So I imagine your company takes the the pain of having to juice at home away. You guys do it for us in a natural way. Yes, we do. There's no more having to to buy all those juicers or wondering if it's going to blow out or or keep working or different things. Now you can get fresh, cold pressed juice um, at your local HEB store or Whole Foods that's made right here in Houston, Texas. And tell me um, about working with HCC, the Open for Business program. How did you find out about it? How has it helped you? Yes, definitely. When I um, saw the opportunity, I I immediately jumped on it because I I have felt that um, as part of my passion to share my story about entrepreneurship and definitely in working with HCC, Office of Entrepreneur Initiatives, and the Open for Business is going to allow me to be able to share firsthand experience with the women or men that come through this program. So I'm definitely excited about that, that we give the um, students an opportunity to not only learn the theory side of it, but also the practical side of entrepreneurship. And you even wrote a book about uh, your life and uh, your healthy lifestyle. Maybe you can tell me about that. Yes, uh, the name of the book is Love My Body Again. It's a 21 day meditation that just helps you to, you know, in remember the importance of taking care of your health, enjoying your body and relaxation and meditation are key to doing those things. So yes, I am an author of a 21 day 
meditation book. And you were also highlighted in uh, the governor's uh, state of the state address. Uh, that must have been a uh, uh, that must have been phenomenal. Yes, at, at the time I was um, at work for um, Exxon Mobil on an IT project. I'm I'm also an accountant by by career. I've been in uh, the oil and gas industry for over 20 years. But um, at that time, when I got the call from the governor's office, just wanting to share my story as an entrepreneur, as a single mom working and just being an encouragement to others that, you know, as he says, when women succeed, Texas succeeds. Absolutely. And uh, once again, your products are found in HEB and in Whole Foods as well, correct? Y yes, sir. Now, Folks, if you're wondering if you've got those juicing machines, you can throw them out because now you can go to Jive Juice for all your juicing needs. You don't have to worry about using a whole bag of oranges just to get yourself a shot of uh, orange juice um, as it works. Uh, what's the biggest misconception somebody may have trying to start their own business? Thinking that, you know, do I have all the tools that I need? Is this the right time to start? You know, it's Really, in my opinion, it's never really the right time to start. You've just got to start. Yeah. And I think that through the program and the information that we're going to be offering through our Open for Business, we'll be able to help those that are wanting to start or, and as well as those who are already existing. And what did you learn over the COVID pandemic? Uh, did you have to pivot your business? Were you getting it off the ground? Um, how did you fare through that? Obviously, you've come out on the other side. Uh, it's a daylight because you got your products out there. But how did you fare through the pandemic? Definitely. Um, during the pandemic was a, a challenging time, as well as for myself and other small businesses. But one of the things that we had to pivot, normally, um, Jive Juice, our target audience centered around um, you know, people who were active and socially um, awareness, people who were um, healthy, focusing on working out and, and different things like that. But since the pandemic, our audience has spread it, not only to more adults, but now children. So we're in families, we're in homes now, and our target audience has increased. And during this pandemic has been a high demand for us and being able to keep up with the demand. It's, it's been definitely an expansion and a challenge for us. Once again, you are part of the HCC's Open for Business program. From what I understand, this is a cat and academy. Uh, what are some of the things that entrepreneurs will be learning in the academy? Definitely during our, our academy, our first um, session that we're running, our first series is, which is the Small Business Success Series, which starts um, November the 2nd. It's open now. We're accepting applications now. So we're, we're putting it out there for everyone to apply, whether you have a starting business, an idea, or already an existing business owner, we want to provide you the tools that you need to be able to go from launching to, to existing and, and being a thriving business. We will have business um, programs that we will be offering, financial and marketing programs, business plan preparation, advising credit counsel, and connections to the Houston business ecosystem. So we're here to take them from the beginning stage all the way to the end so that they can see the deliverables. We've been talking with Tamala Austin. She is the founder of Jive Juice Company. You can now find them at HEB and at Whole Foods. We'll have a link to their company in the social media post for the show. And also she's part of the HCC's Open for Business program. We'll have a link with all that information in our social media post. Tamala, wish you continued success. Thanks for being here on the show. Thank you. All right, we are going to move on. It is Thursday, Virtual Family Fun Day. Very excited to have uh, the Colonial Williamsburg Foundation joining us this morning. Turn things over to Dr. Tony. Dr. Tony, we mentioned before, you're thinking of going to Williamsburg. I got to get up there in the next year or so. So uh, <laughs> let's hear all about it. Okay, very good. Maybe we'll get there together. No, I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> um, hi, Stacy. how are you doing? Very well. Thank you again so much for having me. Oh, thank you. Well, okay, Stacy Hernandez, did you are the digital content director for the Colonial Williamsburg Foundation, right? That okay. is correct. Well, before we talk about all this wonderful digital stuff, let's make sure everybody knows about Colonial Williamsburg. Tell us what that is all about real quick. 
Sure. Well, we are the world's largest outdoor living history museum. And a lot of people think of Williamsburg as a quaint little town. But the reality is Williamsburg was the capital city of the colony of Virginia uh, at the time of the American Revolution. And so we think of it as the capital city. And so the government was seated here, the royal government, which is why we have a building called the Governor's Palace here. The um, the British royal governor for the colony of Virginia uh, lived here in town. And then the representative government um, also met here. And folks that you have definitely heard of, like Thomas Jefferson and George Washington, cut their political teeth right here in Colonial Williamsburg as well. Uh, or in Williamsburg, I should say. Um, but there's also a lot of history for the folks that just lived here, not the folks that traveled here to be part of the government. Um, at the time of the revolution in the mid-1770s, uh, we know that 52% of the population here in Williamsburg was enslaved. And so we're really uh, a museum that's trying to tell as much of the story as we can. And so we are always doing new historic research, archaeological uh, archaeological research, uh, in order to tell as complete a story of what was going on in this town around the time of the revolution as we can. That sounds so wonderful. And, and you do, I didn't realize you did the uh, archaeological research also. That is wonderful. Well, um, okay, let's go to what you do mostly, which is all the digital content. Now, I know you have live streams, virtual tours, which I saw some of those. Those are fantastic. All kinds of things. Did the pandemic start this or were you going to do this anyways? So we had in the past done quite a lot of what we used to call electronic field trip for uh, students. And this was back in the days where we did them on broadcast television. And that had gone away a few years ago. And there'd been a little bit of a gap. And I would say that the, what the pandemic did was sped up something that would have happened anyway, which would, was us joining the, the digital realm. Of, of online education. And so it, it really kickstarted us. And in a way, it was really energizing because we didn't have um, an infrastructure really in place for it. So my role prior to this, although I had worked on the old electronic field trips in the old days, my current role with the foundation was in Teacher Institute working on um, helping teachers to teach this complicated history. And uh, then when the pandemic hit, we did close down for a few months completely. And we jumped on Facebook Live and started doing live streams with nothing more than a, a, web cam, a webcam and a Facebook account and, uh, and a very, very enthusiastic group of people, most of whom who did not have media uh, experience, uh, who just really jumped in and learned a lot of new, uh, of new tools, new skills, and so the Colonial Williamsburg Foundation has decided to keep it going. And so we, while we were doing a lot of quantity, we were live streaming five days a week there at the height of the pandemic when nobody was going out. Uh, and now we're trying to balance that with a little more video production quality. So fewer things happening online, but hopefully what you are seeing is really well thought out, planned, and hopefully useful, especially for uh, teachers. Well, I saw some of the virtual tours, and I know that you have a couple of them at least that talk about behind the scenes, uh, how you go about making these movies and that kind of thing. You want to tell us a little bit about that? Sure. So we, um, for our our live programs, as well as for the, the video production that we do, a lot of it is happening in-house. We only have three of us that are currently working on it full time. Uh, however, we have since the beginning of the pandemic been pulling folks in from the historic area, who, as I mentioned, have learned new skills. So right now, for example, I'm talking to you, but there is a video shoot happening over at our Capitol building. And our nation builders are involved. So um, those are the folks that portray uh, some of the the well known uh, characters from history. So you know Thomas Jefferson's over there being part of a video crew right now, and so is Martha Washington. So uh, so we've got folks from all around the historic area who have pitched in on a part time basis to contribute to this digital content creation, which has been really exciting, and it's been uh, it's great to work with different people uh, across the foundation. 
Well, I noticed you also had something called the virtual scavenger hunt. Now that sounds fun. What is that about? Um, so that is a uh, part of what uh, our web team is actually working on to expand our offerings for children. Uh, so we, we try to do a lot for teachers and students, but we know that there are also a lot of families at home who are looking for things to do online. And so our web team is really working hard on getting other kinds of content out there for uh, parents and, and kids who would just like to explore at home. Well, now you have a specific program coming up this weekend. Tell us a little bit about that. Sure. So we have five different live stream series that we are running right now. And the one that is coming up this weekend at um, at four o'clock Eastern time. <laughs> uh, which would be what? Five o'clock? Which would be... Yes, five o'clock yes. <laughs> our time. Yeah, okay. <laughs> is um, is called Us Past, Present, Future. This is our series that's really all about civic engagement. So we talk a lot about the past in Colonial Williamsburg, but we also want to make it really clear that the past is still relevant today. And so our Us Past, Present, Future series draws connections clear connections between what we might be talking about in the colonial or revolutionary periods, um, the through line to today and how it still has implications. And we have a really special program this Saturday coming up with our own president, uh, Cliff Fleet from Colonial Williamsburg, uh, but also Christy Coleman of the Jamestown Yorktown Foundation and uh, Jamie Boskett of the Virginia uh, Museum of History and Culture. And they are um, three presidents of major historical institutions in Virginia that all deal with the revolution. And uh, so they're going to have a conversation about our upcoming 250th national anniversary. It may not be on everyone's mind, but here in the history world, we're really definitely about is. the fact that our 250th anniversary is coming up here in uh, 2026. Absolutely. And so they're going to talk about how do we talk about the past now? Because um, it's in the forefront of so many people's minds, especially in the world of education. How do we talk about our, our past and the complications around our, our founders? And so it's going to be a really interesting conversation with those three. They say you have to understand your past in order to go forward in the future with a better light, a better idea of how to of how to do that, right? <laughs> and it is, and it's hard to do because history is complicated. It's all about people. And when you get into telling the full, complete story about people and all kinds of different people, it, it, it's complex. It's hard to boil it down and uh, and, and make it a simple thing when it's really a lot of shades of gray. And that's what we're really trying to do here is dig into the complexity a little bit more. It's a difficult I, endeavor, but we try. <laughs> I, I mean, my uh, history was my minor back many, many years ago. And, and what I remember is that the thing about history is everybody who writes the history writes it from their point of view. And you have many points of view. And as a historian, you have to look at that and, you know, decide what happened. <laughs> does that make sense? It sure does. And we we have a couple of other live stream series that touch on that. We have one that's specifically for upper elementary age students called CW Kids Ask. And uh, that's on one Wednesday a month. And the next one coming up is all about the colonial economy. You know, the revolution was a lot about the economy. So we get into, you know, what what was that all about? And in all of those, we include primary sources so that the kids themselves can actually look at some of those original documents and, and try to make some of those um, assessments for themselves. And we, we really like to emphasize that history isn't done. It's not just a list of facts. It's a process and you can still do it. You can be an active participant uh, in the, the making of new history. And then we also have a, a one that really gets into, it's called Consider the Sources, that gets really into what our researchers are doing, the historical researchers, as I mentioned, the archaeologists, our conservators who look at objects and conserve them. Uh, and so we, we have those coming up where we're really looking at, from all different kinds of research perspectives at an object or a material of some kind. 
So uh, people can subscribe to your email list so they can keep up to date with what's going on, right? They can, and they can also join us on social media. Our uh, our live streams are currently being uh, broadcast on Facebook and YouTube. So we do have Facebook and YouTube uh, social media channels that you can join us on, and then as well as our website. So that's wonderful. Well, we're so happy to have you on, and I cannot wait I'm going to convince my husband very soon. We're taking a two-week vacation, okay? Todd, I'm already telling you, and we're going there, all right? (laughs) Well, keep in touch with us virtually until then. Okay. So this is Stacey Hernandez, Digital Content Director for the Colonial Williamsburg Foundation. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Okay, Todd. Yeah, they got some great stuff. You know, I, I watched them before the pandemic happened and they really knocked it out of the park with their digital content during the pandemic because you'd always have on Facebook, you'd have those little icons that would pop up saying they were going live. So we get a chance to check them out. We'll have some links to all of their content in our social media post of the show. Okay, we've got some HCC news and announcements to go over. One thing our students want to remember, uh, today is the last day of transfer fairs. You can take advantage of HCC's transfer fairs being on campuses. It goes through October 14th, that's today. For more information, go to hccs.edu slash transfer fair. You wanna learn how to transfer to another college, talk with some of those college reps, Now's your chance to do so. Student Life has some events going on as well, Tony. Yes, they have events going on today. Uh, Reduce the risk, drug and alcohol awareness. It happens today from noon to 1 p.m., so you still have time to do it. Any substance use comes with risk of harm, but we all think it won't happen to us. So learn to make informed decisions and how you can help others. And then they also have the mental uh, mental wellness warrior. It's called. Uh, that's also today. That's tonight from six thirty to eight p.m. That's on Zoom. Both of these are on Zoom. Uh, it says learn to love and be there for yourself with the help of life coach Stephanie McKenzie. Ten students will win a copy of her book. Be your own superhero. No capes involved. <laughs> Go to hcc.studentlife at hccs.edu. All right. Okay. The SGA General Assembly meetings. Yep, those are happening. If you're interested in being a student leader uh, and you want your voice to help your fellow Eagles, the Student Government Association, known as the SGA, and the United Student Council, known as USC, uh, represent the student body by helping to enhance the college experience. Some upcoming meetings are the Northeast SGA is happening 215 today, October 14th, and the Northeast USC is happening Friday tomorrow at noon. We'll have some links in our social media posts where you can register and attend. And tomorrow is the day, Tony, the employee significance ceremony is happening. Looking forward to it. Uh, People who have reached different anniversaries from five years all the way to 45 years. I can't imagine 45 years in one place. Uh, We're going to have a virtual uh, celebration of that and uh, just talk about the importance of employees and how they keep HCC going. That's going to be tomorrow at 1130 virtually right here. That's right. Okay. Uh, HCC's Walk, Run, and Fun with Hess. That is happening. Uh, Join the fun as HCC sponsors the water stops along the route of the Hess 5K Run and Walk along the main loop at Memorial Park. It's promoting the health and wellness of the corporate community. All levels of runners and walkers are encouraged to participate for their company team. Look for white tents in the Eastern Glades. It's happening from 4 to 6.30 p.m. Tuesday, October 19th. I will be out there. Should be a lot of fun. The HCC tent is tent number two. HCC walkers and runners are uh, to join us at the tent at 4 p.m. where you can pick up your number in a t-shirt after you finish you can pick up a sandwich box so all those goodies if you participate in the run that's happening this coming tuesday should be a lot of fun also the dream leaders club is happening tony yes it is an organization that is open to all students or those who are 
auditing courses as well as students of all ages with any kind of disability, culturally deaf students and non-disabled students who are our allies. Um, it's There are three reasons why they say you should join. One, you get the opportunity to network and make friends. Two, you get to volunteer and give back and serve local communities. And three, you grow and gain leadership skills. And that is always very, very important. So if you're interested in that, uh, email at hcc.dream at hcs.edu. And I think it'll be a great, um, um, healthy and wonderful thing to do. That's right. Okay. One thing that's a wonderful thing to do, sign up for classes here at HCC. Uh, you still have time for some shortened uh, class sessions for the fall semester. They start on the 18th of this month, right around the corner. Go to hccs.edu slash now to register today. Don't wait. Wrapping up today's show, tomorrow we'll have Brandy Brotherton of HCC's A-Leaf Early College High School. She's the principal there. She'll be talking about the dual credit program, and we'll also have a sneak peek at some upcoming shows, Tony. Absolutely. Mental Health Monday, Film Friday, Tasty Tuesday, and another visit from HCC's new police chief. So it's going to be a great week. That's right. Tomorrow's Friday. We hope to see you here on the show. We'll be back live 10 a.m. right here and up to the minute. 